In today's episode, we're gonna give you guys a comprehensive shopping guide to everything you need to know about squash, understanding the differences between varieties, and really breaking down some of the most popular questions you guys ask. Let's go. So when it comes to squash, you have two main classifications of squash. You have summer squash and winter squash. Now the difference between the two is that they are both, yes, they are both cucurtabita pepo, which is confusing, but the big difference is the skin. When it comes to summer squash, summer squash have a thin skin that is usually fairly edible. When it comes to winter squash, the winter squash hardens, becomes very thick, and oftentimes is unpalatable or can even be very bitter. And so it's used more as a storage squash, hence winter squash. Grow it during the main season, it gets hard. Once it cures, you can store it for three to four months or even more indoors. That's the main difference between the two. But now I know you're probably asking this, what's the big difference then between summer squash and zucchini and winter squash and pumpkin? So first let's talk about summer squash. Zucchini is actually a type of summer squash. Most people don't know this. They actually classify it totally differently and they say, well, I don't like summer squash, but I do like zucchini. Well, if you like zucchini, you do like summer squash. That's because there's actually four different types of summer squash, including one being zucchini. So when it comes to the four main varieties of summer squash, you have the most popular being your zucchini. Now your zucchinis are a slender, straight summer squash. The skin is very smooth, and oftentimes they grow in a bush-like pattern. Now the bushes can sometimes get three to four feet long, and that's if a longer growing season allows them to grow you know, for a longer period of time, they're naturally gonna get bigger, but they don't vine like a winter squash will. So they're a smooth skinned, very slender squash. And they are typically seen as like this Italian striped zucchini or a cocazelle. You have a gray zucchini, which is like an Egyptian style zucchini. And then you also have here like this Italian style of Bianca de Tresti zucchini. They're all zucchinis. It's just a subtype of summer squash. Then you have your crook necks. Now your crook necks are typically seen as more of a bent neck and that's hence the name crook neck. Now you can have something like an early prolific straight neck, which is a crook neck that's kind of been straightened out over time. It's still a crook neck variety. And then you have a crook neck like this yellow crook neck squash. Those are two really common types of crook neck summer squash. Next, you've got your scalloped squash or your patty pan squash. These are really common because of their scalloped, that's where they get their name, edges. Those little bumps that are, that are around the perimeter of the squash are known as scallops, and they can be seen in this green scalloped bending squash, or this yellow scalloped squash, or even a white scallop squash. There's many different varieties of scallop squashes, but it's, again, just a type of summer squash. And last but not least, you have your round squash. That can be seen like in the case of this round eight ball squash here, or in the case of this yellow lemon squash. Many different variations of round squashes, but again, the idea is that they are just round in shape. They're all gonna be formed on a bush style squash. The bush may get a foot tall, may get three to four feet tall, but again, that's mostly dependent on the growing season. The skin on all of them is edible and is very soft. And if you try to save these throughout winter, they'll turn into a rotten mess. So that is what differentiates summer squash from winter squash. Now things get really interesting with winter squash. Now, much like zucchini and summer squash, where do pumpkins fall in? If someone says, oh, I like eating winter squash, but I wouldn't eat pumpkin. Well, if you eat pumpkin, you're also eating a winter squash. Pumpkin is just a subtype of winter squash. What differentiates a pumpkin from some of these other options is that typically the skin is going to be slightly thinner and the flesh is going to be slightly less sweet, but it is still a storage squash. And so you have many different options. There are nine different types of winter squash that make up the winter squash category. You have one of them being pumpkins. Some of the more popular pumpkins are like this Long Island cheese pumpkin. You have here this big max pumpkin. This one gets like 60 to 70 pounds, incredible. Then you have here this Rouge de, <laughs> Rouge Vif de Stamps. This is a French style pumpkin, also known as Cinderella. Easier to say that than the original name, but that is a really flat pumpkin. 
And then you have here something like this winter luxury pumpkin, which has actually got a webbing over it, almost like a cantaloupe. It's so beautiful, really incredible. And then last but not least is your Long Island cheese pumpkin. And this is one of my favorites. This actually has a fairly sweet flesh, almost like a winter squash, like you'd probably expect from like a butternut or a, uh, or like a, um, delicata. You can get into those kind of sweeter squashes, but this is a really sweet pumpkin as well. So that's a pumpkin. Now the next category is one that you're probably more familiar with. Now one you're most probably familiar with is the butternut squash. This is actually a style of winter squash. Butternut squash can be seen by their two lobed kind of peanut shaped squash. Now these are a vine. And one thing you'll probably see very commonly with your winter squash versus your summer squash is summer squash are grown on a very short stumpy vine versus your winter squash typically really vine. Now that's not always the case. You can find bush winter squash and vining winter squash. We have a couple we'll get into, but like this Waltham butternut squash here is a butternut style and it will grow very, very long, the vine will. Now you can get into a butternut style, also known as butter bush, and that's still a butternut style squash, but it's a bush variety of butternut. Next style of squash is your kabocha style squash. Now squash have been bred for centuries throughout the world, and you'll find that there are squash that are more, uh, more commonly found in Asian cultures, more commonly found in like French cultures, Spanish cultures, even like European cultures have their own kind of certain squashes that they kind of call to be theirs. And so with this kabocha style squash, this is more of an Asian or Japanese style squash, still a winter squash, but what you'll find differentiates these from say like a pumpkin or an acorn squash is the size. You see these, this is a Burgess buttercup and this is a true kabocha squash. They're both kabocha style, but you'll find that the squash is gonna be a little bit larger than an acorn, a little bit smaller than say like a Hubbard or some of your other varieties of squash, but the flesh is very sweet and the skin is really, really thick on these. Also, the skin is typically going to be green in color in most of your kabocha style squashes. Now we're getting a little bit weird and this is known as a banana style squash. One of the most popular types of banana squash is going to be the North Georgia Candy Roaster. This is by far the most popular and one that you're gonna come across. If you ever look at winter squash, this is popular for the simple sake that it is a high yielding, really large squash. These will get two to three feet long and they are really beautiful. They're super rich in their flavor as well. So that high sugar content and they last a long time. They'll last three to five months in winter storage, no problem at all. Acorn squash. You're probably asking yourself when I was gonna to get to this category, but acorn squash can be found pretty easily by its acorn shaped squash. Now you'll see something like this sweet dumpling. That's an acorn squash. Then you have a table king bush acorn. And then you also have this Gild, Gill's Golden Pippin Squash. There's a lot of different varieties of acorn squash, but what you'll find is that acorn squash gets you into that kind of bush or vining category. A lot of winter squash are vining by nature, but this is where you start to get into some options where if you don't have a lot of space, you can find a winter squash that has long storage, very sweet flavor, but can maybe grow on a bush. Prime example is this right here, this Table King Bush Acorn only gets about three to four feet long. The, the fruit that it puts out is very similar to like a summer squash or like a, kind of like a patty pan style squash, but it doesn't get very large and it's a winter squash. Um, same thing too with like this dumpling, the sweet dumpling squash here. You're gonna be on a vine, but the fruits are fairly small and it stays somewhat compact versus the Gill's Golden Pippin. It's gonna vine out like 10, 15, 20 feet from the base of the plant. So some options there, but that is another variety of the nine different winter squash that are available. Next is a German type of squash, and this is known as a Hubbard squash. Like I said, there's some squash that are more commonly found in Asia. Some are more found in you know, Spain, others are found in Europe. And the Hubbard is that kind of European style squash. Now these squash are, a, they look very similar to a kabocha squash, only they usually have kind of a, a pulled up kind of a teardrop 
point to them, like a water droplet, and it's really cool, very, very cool. But you have here like a golden Hubbard as well as a blue Hubbard, and they're gonna be fairly large. They're gonna be much larger in size than a Kabocha style squash. They're gonna be anywhere from about 15 to 20 pounds. They can be smaller, but generally 15, 20 pounds is what you're gonna average out. And so in the pictures, they don't seem all that large, but Hubbard squash, they're a real nice size. Next is the Delicata style. Delicata style can be seen from its elongated shape, but it's really uniform. Some have ribs, some do not, but also they're usually very, very sweet with a pretty thick skin. This Delicata squash here can also be found, there's another variety called sweet meat. Those are Delicata style and they grow on a vine, they're a winter squash. And again, it's just one other kind of subgroup of winter squash. Now the thing about Delicata that's pretty interesting is the fact that the, the meat to skin ratio is really high. So if you're looking for like a high yielding squash, you're not gonna have a lot of waste, which is what people really like to use these for. Typically you're gonna slice them in half, you're gonna hollow out the cavity and you're gonna roast them. And that makes it wonderful for a whole roasted squash option. Cause some of your other winter squashes have a pretty thick skin, like I said, but these, because they have a really hard yet thin skin, allows them to be preserved indoors for three to four hours. Next winter squash variety, we're getting on a plane, we're flying to Mexico for the Cusha squash. Now the Cusha squash is a Mexican or just a South American style squash. It is also a winter squash, so it has a thick skin, but you'll find that this green striped Cusha squash will get anywhere between 20 to 30 pounds. It's a good size squash, really long life expectancy, or shelf life, I should say, um, once you bring it indoors. But also, it's again, a vining squash. Now, the cool thing about this Kusha squash is it actually was bred with some of your more European style squashes. And so over time, you kind of had a blending or a melding where your Kusha squashes are typically green or blue in color. But there are many different squashes that actually over time have kind of fused together and you have some Asian squash combined with a Kusha squash, and that's actually where you start to get the butternut squash strain of winter squash. And last but not least, you have your kind of, what I would consider to be your pumpkin squashes. Now, there are a lot of different pumpkin squashes out there. Some are called squash, some are called pumpkin. And that's because the botanical world doesn't quite know how to classify these. They have usually a fairly sweet flesh, but a fairly thick skin. And so it kind of has both aspects of squash and pumpkin to them. Usually they're also fairly deeply ribbed like a pumpkin would be. And so you have like this Jaredale pumpkin, very cool, super unique blue, super deeply ribbed, long shelf life pumpkin, but also a squash. And so it's, technically called a pumpkin, but it has more characteristics of a squash than a pumpkin does. Same thing here with this black futsu squash. This by all accounts, you'd look at this and say, ah, oh, it's a pumpkin. If you saw it in a pumpkin field, it'd look like a pumpkin, but it's a squash. Why? Well, it's just because of the way they named it. Don't let that get you hung up because there are a lot of different squash pumpkins that might look like one or look like another. But at the end of the day, like I said, Pumpkin is just a subgroup of winter squash. It's still used for storage, it's still used for, for cooking, it's still edible, but it may not have as much sugar content. But wait, I got one more thing to talk about here, and that's the difference between gourds and squash. A lot of people get this confused and think that they are the same. They are technically the same, but they're also technically not, and I'll explain. Now when it comes to gourds, they are still a cucurbita pepo which causes some confusion because they're all in the cucurbita pepo classification. Now, certain varieties of gourds you'll find can be edible, like in the case of the Turk's turban. You can eat it, but it's not recommended. And the reason why is because of the flavor, the thickness of the skin, or the size of the fruits. You'll find that oftentimes gourds are gonna be very, very thick, super hard to actually cut into. Once you do, you'll find the seed cavity is really large in proportion to the amount of meat. So harvesting from it becomes really not worth your time. But then finally, you'll find the flavor themselves is really unpalatable. Many times gourds are called gourds, 
because over time, as they've been tasted, they're usually really bitter, and in some cases are so bitter, they can cause nausea and upset stomach. So that is why when you see gourds, typically they have another purpose. Usually it's ornamental, or in the case of like a loofah gourd, it's dried, and the inside uh, membrane of the gourd can actually be used to create a sponge, which can be used in like your shower. So there's still a purpose, but it's not an edible purpose. I hope this really helped, and I really hope that this broke down some of that information, and I really hope also that you guys found uh, found this to be fun, informative, and you know enlightening in some way. I know there's a lot of different options, and ultimately what this comes down to is: Are you looking for certain flavor, certain growth characteristics, maybe certain origins? If you're looking for you know growing uh, like ethnically accurate uh, examples for what you're trying to cook in your house. Um, you might want to go with a certain type of squash, but they're all going to be great. I'd recommend trying them all. There's a lot to learn about squash, winter squash, summer squash, gourds, giant pumpkins, and the like. So, hope you guys enjoyed. As always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow bigger. Check out MIGardener.com. If you're looking at getting some seeds, we got you covered. We'll catch you all on the next episode. See ya.